and welcome to the celebration of the 2021 Kresge Arts in Detroit Awards. We have this evening performances by Sharice Morris, also a performance by Pasalacqua, and remarks from 30 artists who are receiving awards, no strings attached. Each of those awards are either Kresge Artist Fellowships of $25,000 each or Gilda Awards of $5,000 each. Last year, the Kresge Foundation increased the number of awards from 20 to 30 in light of the pandemic. This year, they've made that increase permanent, meaning that there's an additional $90,000 going into Detroit's arts and culture community each year, directly into the hands of individual artists, and again, entirely no strings attached. I'd like to thank the Kresge Foundation for their vision and their commitment to Detroit artists, as well as the College for Creative Studies for administering this program. And now it is my pleasure to hand the virtual mic to W. Kim Heron of the Kresge Foundation. Thank you, Christina, for that introduction. And uh, thank you, panelists, for joining us here today. We have with us Carol Harris, fiber artist extraordinaire, Kresge artist fellow, Rip Rapson, president of the Kresge Foundation, Don Tusky, president of the College for Creative Studies. And let's start with Carol. Carol, can you just reflect on, as a fellow, what the impact has been for you personally and what has the impact been on this art scene that you've been such an important part of for so many years? Well, I think it's been huge. You know, uh, before the Kresge Arts Awards, everybody was sort of working on their own, you know, in their own little silo, hoping to get a little bit of recognition someplace. But I think uh, having an organization, the stature of Kresge, you know, come on board and offer this opportunity, you know, for artists of all kind, um, it just sort of upped everybody's game. And, um, you know, it's, it's for me personally, it has helped validate and encourage, you know, what I do as an artist. Um, and I think that I'm hearing that from other artists as well. You know, I mean, it's, it's, Kresge is the buzz all year, all day, all the time. Rip, when you brought this program to Kresge and to Detroit, um, what, 14, 15 years ago, 13, 14 years ago, what were your expectations and how has what's happened differed? Well, I actually think Carol has put exactly the right pin in it. Uh, when I came to Kresge, there was a, both reputationally and what you could sort of see day in and day out, this an enormous vitality in the arts community. There was huge cultural tradition, there was a jazz scene that was vibrant, a visual arts scene that was vibrant, but it seemed as if people were sort of working in isolation. And I think just as Carol suggested, what we hoped was, is we would create sort of more of an ecology. If you could figure out ways to sort of tie institutions to individuals, to groups, that people would begin thinking together about projects they might do, that people would become sort of more mutually reinforcing, and it would just create sort of a sense of community. Have there been some surprises in the way it's rolled out? Yeah, I think it's been more successful than, than we could have possibly anticipated. Because when we began, it was sort of a simple construct. I mean, it, it was, let's give some artists some fellowships. Let's provide some support for institutional arts um, organizations. And let's elevate an eminent artist once a year. And those all seemed powerful gestures. I think what we didn't anticipate was just how powerful that would be. What an accelerant it would be to conversations about the importance of artists, the importance of arts and culture. Don, you know, you as president of College for Creative Studies, you interact with a lot of young people. And I'm interested, how does having this really large number, this kind of community of artists who've been awarded and these annual awards, how does that affect their perception of the art scene that they, I think by and large, we can say hope to become part of? I think our students see more examples of how to make your way as an artist and, and the mentoring and the collaboration and the synergy, uh, all the great galleries in Detroit um, that our students get to interact with uh, as a student and many of them as alumni. And some of our alumni who end up staying in Detroit, which, which is great too, and winning some of the awards, it's really just a, a great example of how, uh, how a city and a foundation support the arts. And I think it builds on what Carol said as well, is that Kresge put some money toward um, individual artists, organizations, eminent artists, and that was all really important. But what happened 
as a result of that, I think, were this sort of this almost ricocheting around the community. So the College for Creative Studies got engaged, the Knight Foundation got engaged, the city of Detroit itself got engaged. And I think what happened was that all of that energy that was already there ended up sort of surfacing in a much more powerful way and ended up being supported in multiple ways by institutions of all stripes. And I think that was a little bit of a surprise of how once this flywheel began turning, it, it went faster and faster and faster. And I think now there really is virtually no organization in the city of Detroit that isn't touched by and influenced by the work of arts, uh, culture, and design workers. Carol, you've been a, a um, fellow, but you've also been a panelist. A couple of years ago, you were one of the people who chose from, I guess, hundreds of applications uh, in the visual arts. And what was that experience like? And, and did you learn something about the arts community um, that you didn't know before after all of that? I think we went through maybe like four or 500. I, I can't remember the number right now. But probably 90% of them were really, really very good. And, you know, it was just amazing that there were so many working artists. Um, and it, so it was, it was very difficult when, to narrow it down, obviously, to, what, 18, I think, we, we selected. And thank you, Rick. I understand the, the numbers have increased this year, so that's really wonderful to see, you know, more support for more artists. Well, I, thank you for saying that, Carol. One of the conversations that Kim and I had uh, when COVID hit was, why should we not sort of expand the reach of the program? I mean, it, it was already robust, but I thought, boy, if you could even increase it by a third, add more fellowships, add to the Gildo Awards, um, create sort of different senses of energy at a time when people seemed really in need of energy and in, in need of inspiration. It's not something that's sort of a a one time and roll it back kind of affair. I think we're gonna keep it at that level. And I hope over time, um, whether it's through Kresge or through some of our partners, we can in increase the number even higher. Now, Christina sent me uh, something from one of the past fellows, um, Adrian Marie Brown, where she talks about science fiction and visionary fiction is where she goes for. And I love this phrase, the medicine of possibility applied to the trauma of human behavior. And of course we've all spent a lot of time these last 18 months thinking about trauma and uh, and possibilities. And just wanted to throw it around to everybody. Maybe we'll start with you, Don. How did that medicine of possibilities come through to you from arts in, this, in these last 18 months? Well, that, thanks, Kim. I, that's a great question. Uh, thanks, Christina, for, for sending it along. The yeah, our students, uh, I was really proud of all of our students and how they with our student help of our student government, how they really adapted both on campus and off campus, um, how studios became um, uh, so uh, came in different forms now. Um, you know, backyards, bathtubs, kitchen tables, cars. That was a popular studio. That students were really innovative and figuring out a way to keep making um, our art during the pandemic. And that is something I think I found really interesting, um, as hard as it was for all of us, that creativity just kept going, and uh, again, with the great support of the Kresge Foundation. So it's an exciting place to be always, and it was exciting to be here even during a pandemic when we had great things were still happening. Well, I think, Kim, too, it, 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 these last uh, 12 to 15 months have been a, a sort of a convergence of pandemics, right? You've got the health pandemic, you've got the economic pandemic, and you've got the racial justice and reconciliation pandemic. And I can't think of how we possibly could invent something more appropriate to sort of bridge across those domains than arts and culture. I mean, think of what our arts and cultural community have done to um, help us get through the isolation of the, of the health pandemic. Think of how they have articulated a different set of sensibilities and imperatives coming out of the racial justice movement. I mean, think of how they have helped sort of stabilize our economy at a time when it was about to fall out from underneath us. There is no other sector capable of doing that with the kind of grace and uh, strength and vision that our arts and cultural workers have of the city have done. It, it is, I think in many ways, it's sort of what has saved our city from an even darker time. 
And, and Carol, you're both a creator, you know, uh, and uh, I, 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 just, I know a consumer of art, if the consumer is not quite the right word, but, but you sort of have a different position. Can you talk about how that's affected you both as um, part of the cultural, someone who takes the culture in and someone's also creating it. It was a kind of a concentrated time that I could be in my studio and devote time to making my work, making art. Um, and it's something, you know, and it was also my happy place, you know, with all the bad things that were going on, you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, the, the economic crisis, the racial crisis, then there was the political crisis and the health crisis. But if I turned off the TV and the radio and went into my studio, you know, all, all of that kind of went away and, you know, it was... It, it was difficult even then, you know, because, you know, you can't not think about what's going on out there. You know, people were dying, and, you know, from this health crisis. So, uh, and it, it had an impact on the work, too. You know, I might not have thought so much about it politically, you know, infusing uh, those kinds of statements in my work, but it came out no matter what. You know, there were some things that uh, were addressed through the work. Carol, do you have any advice to the um, 30 artists that we're going to hear from very shortly about uh, what they should look for in the year ahead? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, aside from the money, uh, Kresge offers quite a lot of other kinds of enrichment. And I think I would advise you to take full advantage of all that is offered to you. Take advantage of, you know, your new cohorts. You, you'll be meeting all kinds of new people to do different things that may have and certainly will have an impact on the work that you do. So, yeah, take advantage of everything that's put in front of you. Rips, any closing thoughts from you? I think artists have a unique ability to help us see the world differently. And boy, if there was ever a time when we needed to see the world differently, it's coming out of a pandemic, it's coming out of a, a suite of activities that sort of promise a different trajectory for racial justice, it's coming out of the possibility of sort of rebuilding our economy sort of piece by piece. And I just really believe that artists can help us do that with greater imagination, uh, greater creativity, and, and greater courage. It sometimes takes an artist to really push the limits of, of what people feel comfortable with. And if there was ever a time uh, we welcome that, it would be now. Don, two things. One, any closing thoughts? And you also have uh, the honor of taking us into the next portion of the show and introducing us uh, to the beginning of the Gilda Awardees portion. Thanks, Kim. And thanks, Carol and Rep, for your great insights. I really enjoyed listening to all uh, your, uh, your insights about these awards and the importance of, of artists. I want to thank the artists for being artists. I think that uh, the courage, as Rip was talking about, the risk you take, the willingness to point out injustices and do something about it, how much, how hard you work to make communities better, um, that to be an artist, you have to be all in. You can't just kind of dabble in it. And I think that I really admire and feel lucky to be around so many great artists uh, in and around Detroit. And I just really want to thank you for, for having the courage and the, and the, and the, the, the boldness to, to make a difference in this world. And we, and we so need it, as Carol and Rip has pointed out. So thank you. And now let, let's celebrate the Gilda Award recipients. Each of them received $5,000, no strings attached, as Carol said. And the Gilda Awards uh, honor Gilda Snowden's legacy as a mentor and champion of emerging artists in Detroit. It's really wonderful to have this, this, this great support from the Kresge Foundation. Recipients are early in their career. They're gaining momentum. They demonstrate exceptional potential while taking risks and pushing the boundaries in their chosen art field. So congratulations, and I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. Thank you. Hello, peace. I am Bayan the Poet, and I am an educator in Detroit. I am originally Algerian-American and born in Hamtramck, which is where we're filming this, so it's very sacred for me to be here accepting the Gilda Snowden Emerging Artist Award right here. Um, it's a huge milestone and an achievement for me. I'm just humbled to receive this as the first Muslim woman in hijab to get a Kresge Art Award. Um, not an accomplishment just for me, but for my fellow Muslim sisters as well. 
Um, with this award, uh, I plan to elevate my narrative and spotlight other Muslim women artists. Um, so I'm excited to see where this journey continues to take me. Peace. Ashe. I cannot thank everyone at Kresge enough for choosing to recognize me and support my work with this award. I also cannot thank enough my partner, Paul, who is always incredible when I'm working too much, my mom, Kate, dad, Atso, and brother, Tele, for a lifetime of support, too many great friends to name, Mike McGonigal and the Metro Times for helping me find my place, Third Man Records for helping me expand it, and all the brilliant musicians and artists who have opened themselves up to me and allowed me to write about them. Thank you for the music. Lastly, thank you to Alice Coltrane. Hi, my name is Rochelle Merritt, and I'm so honored to be a 2021 Gilda Award recipient. I'm a fiction writer, born and raised in Jamaica, so I feel especially grateful to be recognized by this selection committee. Immense thanks to the Kresge Foundation, to the Detroit art community for supporting my career and making me feel so welcome. Special thanks to Room Project, to my parents, without whom none of this would have been possible, to my husband for his emphatic and unending support, and lastly, to my daughter, whose very existence, perseverance, and verve for life inspires me to boldly pursue my wildest dreams. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Donovan Tobert. I'm 26 years old from Detroit, Michigan. I'm a graduate of Wayne State University where I major in theater. I also received my, uh, my master's in educational leadership, so I do a little bit of teaching here and there. And that's um, a big part of why I write. Um, I, I wanna teach people that, um, you know, we, we all got a story to tell and uh, to be able to put that story on paper, we all know it's a challenge sometimes, but you never know whose life you could impact. You never know whose life you could change just from reading a story. I remember being a kid and reading books all the time and now I'm looking to write them. So you never know you all just keep on pushing, understand that your journey is never over until you say it's over. And that's a big part of why I write my art. Um, this journey is not over, it's actually just beginning. So I just want to thank Kresge. Um, I want to thank my mom, who's inspired me every day, my brother and my sister. Oh, and um, I should have said this. Uh, I want to shout out my beautiful daughter. Um, she is my inspiration. She is my 100% reason why I go after this life that I'm pursuing every single day. So thank you, Kresge. Thank you, mom. Thank you, bro. Thank you, sis. And I love you, Brielle. Let's get this money. Hi, my name is Ijana Cortez. Uh, I'm a 2021 Guild Awards recipient, and I'd like to say thank you to everybody. The people who have influenced me have been, it's, it's been a lifelong journey of influence in my craft, um, and I'm just really, really happy and excited and thankful to uh, be here. Um, to everybody who's helped me from like, the first teacher who's taught me how to draw to um, people I've met along the way that teach me um, my, my craft better and to teach me business better. I thank them. Uh, thank my mom. My name is Backpack. I am a 2021 recipient of the Gilder Award for the Discipline of Painting. Um, I'd like to thank my chosen family, my chosen biological family, my extra family, and all the families that have taken me in. Um, I'd also like to thank my mentor and my support team and my collaborators. And last, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank my support animals, my therapists, my doctors, coffee, some modern technology, my truck, clean socks, windows that open, respirators, waterproof backpacks, good shoes, and nice acoustics. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jessica Freelingheisen. I'm honored to be a 2021 Gilda awardee. My work is performative and I make performance art and installations. I am so excited to be part of the awardee community this year. Kresge Arts in Detroit has been a really great force for providing uh, support to us as artists in Detroit, and I'm very excited to be part of that this year. It's a huge boost to my own work, 
and um, the support and recognition that I have been seeking in this community for a while. I am very thankful to the panelists, to Kresge Arts in Detroit, and to my friends and family that provide um, such support and such love for what I am trying to do with um, participatory artwork um, in, in my own work um, here in Michigan and abroad. My name is Cyrus Krimapur, and I'm honored to have been selected as the recipient of a 2021 Gilda Award. I would like to thank the selection committee and everyone at Kres Garrett's in Detroit and the College for Creative Studies. I owe a special debt of gratitude to my wife Marla, Carl Toth, Miriam Romay, Christine Sheffman, Jeff Bourgeau, and the late Jack Summers. Their support has been invaluable. While experimenting and really pushing a medium, it's easy to fall into self-doubt. This award encourages me to trust myself and continue to take chances in my work. I am truly grateful for this opportunity. Hi, my name is Cinnamon Triano. I'm a documentary filmmaker and video collage artist. And I'm so incredibly honored and grateful to be one of the 2021 Gilda Award recipients this year. It has been a dream for many, many years to be a part of the Kresge art community. I'm always blown away with the fellows that are chosen yearly. Um, I think that Detroit has one of the most incredible artist communities in the world. And I really want to thank Kresge for fueling and funding these artists to continue making work that the world truly needs to see. Um, I want to thank my family and friends for always encouraging me to stick with this, this artistic path, even when it feels like an impossible task to do so. And I especially want to shout out my mom, who is a lifelong artist and potter, who's always encouraged me to use art as an expression when maybe I've been too shy to, to speak otherwise. So thank you so much. I'm honestly in shock. I'm so thankful. Thank you, Kresge. Thank you. Hi, my name is Neha Ved Patak, and I would like to thank the Kresge Arts in Detroit for this honor. I'm very grateful to be recognized. I want to thank my dear parents, amazing husband, and little daughter, who was just seven weeks old when I was filling out the Kresge application. So this award will always be extra special to me. I want to thank my dear friends, well-wishers, and champions who always believed in me and supported me. As a working artist for the last 15 years, I truly believe in the power of art. It can create empathy, curiosity, and build bridges. And so I'm very happy to call myself an artist. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Katie McGowan. Congratulations to all of the 2021 Gilda awardees. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of this year's panelists who were responsible for selecting the winners. This year's literary arts panelists include Sarika Chandra, Douglas Kearney, Gina B. Kim, Leslie Reese, and 2019 Kresge Artist Fellow Jack Chang. The visual arts panelists were Sima Famalant, John Brinton Hogan, Osman Khan, Camila Janan Rashid, and 2017 Kresge Artist Fellow Sydney James. Now I'd like to introduce 2019 Literary Arts Fellow Sharice Morris, who will be performing a folklore entitled Born by the River. Her performance will be followed by remarks from the 2021 Kresge Artist Fellows in Literary Arts. Legend has it, our people come from the water, eternal womb of intuition and memory, where our highest goddesses and gods took sanctuary. 60% of the human body, the first home any of us have ever known, our righteous passageway back and forward. The water was the ontological depth from which we sprouted in the fullness of our being, the thing which held our hips and moved the rhythms of our lives, the looking glass reflecting our rights and wrongs. The water was home. The water was us. But the water would one day become a fearful thing as time sealed the horrors of who and where and how and when we landed here. The water would become a reminder of these oppressions. 
the site where we first lost sight of our former selves. When we could remember nothing else, we would remember the currents that shepherded us here to this violence, to destinies we never imagined and places we never wished to go. The water, too, would remember the traumas we'd spent centuries trying to outrun, overturn, and unlearn. The water was the archive keeping record of the cries, calls, names, and narratives that sank and drowned at its bottom with the passages of time. The water was perhaps the last one to really know who we were. The precipice between our undoing and our becoming, the water would always know our triumphs as kin to our pains. It is a well-known story, the water and our nebulous connection to it, our linkages as tense and confusing as they were tender and nurturing. We have both loved and feared the water fiercely. As we heard the whistles and hollers of hoses beating backs down against pavement and came to know the might of hurricanes turning our eyes towards watching God, we would still remember the legend of the Igbo who walked across the river home, who chose to drown to keep from living lives submerged. To escape the chains of our confinement, Harriet told us to wade in the water. To find healing and reprieve, we offered our body to its warm caresses. To be graced by God, we volunteered our heads to its tides. But Lord only knows how many of us were hurled off ship's deck, left to crash and rot among the waves, how many of us gave in to the floodwaters, how many of us suffered involuntary deaths by the many forms of drowning. And despite all this, and perhaps because of it all, the river was always our last stop on the way to freedom. This dualism lives in our blood. In our lineage, there has been those of us who drowned by will and those who drowned by force. Back on the continent, our reverence for the water was commemorated in the likenesses of our deities. By performing time-honored rituals and ornate ceremonies, we danced for the water, sang to the water, left offerings by the water. We placated it, understanding its essential role in creating and sustaining our lives and never underestimating its power to undo them. Great civilizations rose and fell to the tides of the river. Epic tales reached their climaxes and conclusions at its shores. Lives began and ended at the water's bend. We have been born by the river, and we have died by it. From all I've read, it's important to stay hydrated when you're grieving. Eight glasses of water a day is perhaps the simplest way to tend to oneself in the presence of absences aching. A subtle salute to self-care, to soften the bowels, moisten those hard, rough edges, rinse the sorrows just enough to keep the heart beating. I suppose with the proper lubrication, anything goes down smoother and pain is no different. When hope is momentarily out of sight, there's something in the water that helps us find our grace, regain some sense of balance, and if not our grace and balance, at least the breath to hold on to ourselves to stay with who we are despite bereavements, temptations, to reckless abandon. But what did those mothers in Flint do? As they mourned the coming of the Reaper's legions, lives stolen from those too young to even grasp the wounding like ten shots to the heart, what did those women drink? How did they moisten their palates and drench their sorrows when the water was what they were mourning? I keep a glass of water on each of my ten altars and sometimes under my bed. I bring it to life. I pour libations to my dead. I visit the river not as often as I should, but as often as I can, leaving offerings that will drift back to the mythic ocean, still holding the echoes from our first crossings. And when water spills from my glass, it teaches me that holiness cannot be contained. That is the truth of infiniteness. That through our trials, tribulations, and triumphs, we share the adaptability of water. We stay fluid despite the rigidities of despots. That we can never be fully estranged from our divine and sacred selves, or from what the love of water has taught us about our healing and our freedom. And just like the water, we too are shapeshifters. I can't say how all this weighs on me, but I can say that it wasn't until I visited the Caribbean 
at the edge of that ocean that had once betrayed us. Returning there was where I found enough peace to soften my body to the waves, where it felt a little something like a home, a sanctuary, a force of freedom and love overflowing. My name is Imeldieta Adolphus, and I'm a writer of creative nonfiction. I would say, you know, very early on in my career, there are a number of people, you know, I won't name them here, but there are a number of people who um, really took a chance on me um, when I didn't, you know, necessarily have that support in my corner. And to those people, I am eternally grateful, and they're still in my life today. And um, I very much feel like this Kresge Award is an extension of that. You know, um, it's, sh it's showing you that what you're doing, you know, whatever your chosen field is in, in art or whatever your chosen discipline, it's showing that what you're doing, you're onto something and Kresge believes in you. And um, to have that feeling to win this uh, means the world to me. Hello, my name is Danielle O'Bear. I am um, thrilled to be a 2021 uh, Kresge Award recipient this year. I'm an associate professor of graphic design at Wayne State University. Um, and I just want to thank the Detroit arts community and the Detroit activist community for creating such a fertile um, and wonderful place to make work for the last many years. Congratulations to everybody else that's receiving an award this year. I'm thrilled to be a part of this cohort. Thank you to the Kresge Foundation for supporting and investing in Detroit artists. I am honored and grateful to be counted among them. I'd like to thank my sister, Exandra Coles, for teaching me to want more for myself and my husband, Josh Bales, for his unconditional support. I wanna thank some teachers, starting with Mary Arpaia and Ann Middlebrooks, and moving on to the women of the Estuary Collective, all of whom teach me and keep me going. I also want to thank my mom and dad, Carlos and Diana De Lao, for teaching me about sacrifice, and Sue and Steve Bales for their unconditional support of my creative practice. My name is Jenny De Lao, and I am honored to be a 2021 Literary Fellow. I'm very excited for this next chapter. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ann Eskridge, and I think that writing is a journey. And my journey started when my father would tell me bedtime stories and put me as the main character. And then I would do that for my brothers. And then in first grade, I would dictate stories to my mother and she would type them out. So over this journey, I've had friends and family, collaborators, crews, colleagues, and mentors, as well as students help me on this journey because sometimes I wanted to turn back or I wanted to quit or I went in the wrong direction. So for them, thank you. And I am honored to be a Kresge 2021 Artist Fellow. I'm Tarek Lovun, a poet and community organizer. And I'm so grateful to the Kresge Arts of Detroit Foundation from the staffers who make this happen, to the panelists who selected me for this honor. When it comes to winning anything, I think that's always a complicated feat, especially when I consider the ways in which wealth is amassed and how certain industries proliferate gatekeeping. Um, and so with that said, I wanted to take the moment to acknowledge that while I do feel very grateful for the opportunity, I also feel very lucky. I think about my family, for example, back home in Gaza, who never have the infrastructure or the opportunity to apply for such a thing like this, let alone win it. And so I often want to kind of take a step back and acknowledge all the voices and the stories who don't get acknowledged in these spaces or in this work and take a moment to reflect on that and kind of recommit myself and the work that we all do to those voices and those stories. With that said, um, I do want to say that while I'm grateful for the flexibility and the ability to continue the work that I'm doing, I'm really also grateful for the ability to be in the ranks of so many literary artists I look up to and admire, from Vavi Francis to Matthew Olsman to Dee Matthews to Nandi Comer to my dear friend Tommy Blunt. I'm excited to be able to follow in the footsteps and the legacy of these literary powerhouses and continue the work that they're doing with a fellowship such as this. And so. Um, there are so many things I could say, but I know we're limited on time. So all I'll say is that um, I'm excited to get back to the craft. And as my advisor, Ciadel Young, would say, to paraphrase him, uh, to the good and necessary work. Hi, everyone. My name is Mars, and I'm incredibly honored to become a 2021 Kresge Arts in Detroit Fellow. 
to have my work recognized in this way as a writer born and raised in Detroit feels like incredibly humbling. And I'm so glad to be included in a community of artists whose work has been supported by Kresge. As any artist would probably say, I couldn't be here without an entire community of people who have raised me. And I would love to give thanks to my grandmother, Naomi, to my mother, Nadine, to my siblings, Crystal and Natasha for always, always supporting my work. I'd also like to give a big thanks to a huge, rich literary community here in Detroit who has supported my work and has helped me grow my work, um, daring me to become more brave and more honest as I continue to explore my craft. Thank you all so much. Thank you to community organizations here in the city that has given my work room to grow. And most of all, a big, big thanks to Kresge. Thank you for supporting my work in this way. I look forward to a year filled with creating and being well supported on this journey. My name is Jasmine Parks, affectionately known as Jazz, and I am a spoken word poet and a 2021 Kresge Grant Fellow. I will first and foremost like to thank the creator or the creators of this universe outside of me and inside of me. I'm very thankful for the life experiences that I have had and also been extended grace and healing in my life. I would also like to extend my thanks and appreciation to my loving husband, Brad Parker, and my daughter, Janiah, who have been supportive of me throughout this entire journey from when I first started performing in the city all the way up into now and beyond. I would also like to thank my friends and my colleagues that helped get me this far, including LaShawn Phoenix Moore, Phoenix Farrow, Shantae Brown, Elise Lucy, Brittany, and Justin Rogers. I would also like to say thank you to my other friends, Dana Fanoy, Tayana, Patrice. I appreciate you all for helping me, um, just being there in the wee hours of the night, making sure that y'all have my back, along with some wine for anything that I was going through to tell these stories. I'm very appreciative of all the blackness all of the womanness, all of the queerness, all of the intersecting identities that have come before me that show me that representation and telling these stories are possible and may my stories also inspire and heal throughout. Thank you so much to the Kresge Foundation and the Kresge um, staff in Detroit. I appreciate you all. Hi, I'm B. Van Randall. I'm founder of Verse Comics USA. Uh, just want to say thank you to the Kresge Fellowship Foundation and the College of Creative Studies for selecting me to be a 2020 Kresge Award winner this year. I'm very excited for this opportunity. I'm very excited to get to work with other fellows, uh, to network with other creatives in this space, and to also be able to contribute my skills and expertise to the, to the fellowship. It's been a really, really long time. We've put a lot of work in. My team and I were putting together these graphic novels and comic books and to finally see the fruits and to see the recognition from these things. It's just, it just really, really, uh, we, we're just ecstatic about it. So just looking forward to this year, to what it's going to bring. And, you know, we'll see you, uh, see you throughout the year. Thank you. I am Casey Rushto, and I just want to start by saying thank you so much to Kresge and to the panelists. We had an incredibly difficult job this year, uh, choosing all, all of the winners via Zoom, so I really appreciate y'all. Um, I want to give thanks to my parents, Nancy and Kevin, uh, for always encouraging me to be creative and sort of pursue whatever I wanted to. Um, and I want to give thanks to all of my grandmothers, in particular my grandmother June, who was just always an avid reader. Um, and it is her birthday next week, so I also have her heavy on my brain. And I want to uh, congratulate the other winners. Uh, it's been a it's been a tough couple of years, and so congrats to all of us. I'm really excited to meet you and see what you're working on. And um, 
I just want to say, I, I, you know, I've been in Detroit now about seven years, and it's the longest I've lived anywhere outside of where I grew up. And so winning this really means a lot to me for a lot of reasons. I think sometimes I get discouraged about my own work, and uh, this this kind of validation just feels, it feels good to be recognized in this way. And... Um, yeah, I'm just really, really, really thankful. So uh, thanks, y'all, and enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs> Hi, I am Zigzag Claiborne, and I am a 2021 Kresge Arts Fellow, which makes me sound a lot fancier than I ever have in my life. Thank you very much for this award. Kresge Foundation, thank you to the staff of Kresge Arts in Detroit, and thank you to Detroit's unending and awesome creativity. The imagination is the engine for everything. So to that I say, despite everything, create. Peace and be well. Yo. Yo. You know, to be a successful artist in Detroit, you really have to be doing something unique, something spectacular that this city has never seen. And with a city with as rich of a history as Detroit, uh, that is, that is all the more evident. And 2021 fellows, you have done just that. Congratulations. You're the cream of the crop. Mm. We love to see it. Yeah. Uh, please take advantage of all the opportunities provided to you this year and take a little bit of time to reflect on all the hard work that got you here today. You know, uh, the best thing about being a fellow is once you're a fellow, you're always a fellow. And we want to thank the Kresge Arts Foundation for having us here at Dabbles to perform for you. Uh, we put a new album this year, and this is a song called Feral Kids from that album. What do you want to tell them about the song? Live from Dabbles, sit back, relax. This is Feral Kids. Mo Ferro, Mo Ferro, Mo Ferro kids. Not stero, not stero, not stero kids. Mo Ferro, Mo Ferro. Not stero, not stero. Man fell from the sky and hit his noggin. Bleeding on the crossroads and started rhyming, but. You gotta promise me, promise. you gotta promise Don't tell nobody about this, don't keep it quiet I heard he was a rapper and a giant And he was on the church steps where he was kicking science Drawing on the dollars, studying the cosmic Surrender to the woman and he traveled by toboggan Break the brittle system like a cheddar biscuit Taking all the swords to the picket fences Taking all this war to the boards and switches Loving two or more in this morning bridges Mad superstitious, let a mass new militia Snatch the cash from the rich Mixing up the social clubs of Buena Vista All designer privilege, Afrofuturistic Strapped up on this uniform and now they act pretentious like Oh You blind and you blind it shows Genocide, still genocide. Thank the Lord you still alive. I'm a wild boy, I'ma stay alive. I've been alive, I'ma stay alive. Up. Mo Ferro, Mo Ferro, Mo Ferro kids. Not stero, not stero, not stero kids. Mo Ferro, Mo Ferro. Yeah. Not stero, not stero. Huh. Sun shining. Sun shining. Hallelujah. Call the buckle Lee and let it come with two. two. I know the form is fate. So I go to the other side uh, to jet uh, ski and drink uh, tea in the afterlife. Uh, Ice cream and apple pie, ever so apropos. apropos. Man ascended from soil for more than tapping toes. The skin is shedding, we're beginning a new episode. No longer woo by them one dimension centerfold. It's finger foods, it's fickle feuds. See, when you lit the fuse, uh, those little things don't cut the muscle like they used to do. Keeping it moving on that walk, man, it's only catching people misstepping and putting ketchup on that coney. Ah, 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 yeah, 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 We're enjoying yeah, ourselves yeah. at Dabbles. You know. You thought you knew those kids. You thought you knew them. You thought you knew them. You thought you knew those kids. You thought you knew them. You thought you knew them. You thought you knew those kids. You thought you knew them. Thought you knew. You thought you. You thought you. Ah. Mo Ferro, Mo Ferro, Mo Ferro Keats. Not Cero, not Cero, not Cero Keats. Mo Ferro, Mo Ferro. Not Cero, not Cero. Congratulations again, 2021 Kresge Fellows. Congrats. You did it, you did it. 
I'd be toasting a drink, uh, and, and, and we're, we're, we're pouring sweat just for you beautiful people. <laughs> congrats, congrats a thousand times over. Go celebrate, go dance in the street. 2021 fellows, let's go. Peace. My name is Peter Daniel Bernal and I am a painter. I'm very grateful for winning a 2021 Kresge Artist Fellowship. I'll do my best to honor Detroit and the Kresge Arts Foundation by using the resources to aim high for projects I couldn't otherwise access. Special thanks to all of my friends for their support, but especially Paul Matt and Chris, Rob Rick and the studio, Dr. V, and finally my wonderful wife Ellen for believing in me as a person and as an artist. Hello, my name is Judy McReynolds Bowman, and I am very nervous, so I'm going to read this so I get it right. I am honored and filled with immense joy to be selected to be a 2021 Kresge Fellow. I would like to congratulate all the other fellows and say thank you to the judges and everyone associated with the Kresge Fellow. I would like to say thanks to a host of people, friends, and collectors who've helped me along my journey. First, I'd like to thank my husband, Stan Bowman. He's been my wingman, and I would not be here without his help. I would like to thank my art family, and Linda, and Sharon, and Adwa for your support. I love you. And I would like to thank Henry Harper and Harold Braggs from the Detroit Fine Arts Breakfast Club, and all of his members, and all of my support, and my art family. I'd like to thank you, Michael Horner, for introducing me to The Breakfast Club. And thank you, NCA, for your support, too. And lastly, I would like to thank all of the galleries for promoting my work and helping me. And thank you so much. And I would like to say thank you to Larry Melkis, Norm Stewart, Carla Anderson, and LaToya Cross, who helped me move to another level. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is such an honor and I will do my absolute best to be worthy of a Kresge Fellow. Hi, my name is Brian Day. To be acknowledged and recognized in this way is a privilege and a blessing that I'll probably struggle to articulate for the rest of my life. I wanna thank the Kresge Arts in Detroit organization for the generous award of this fellowship. I'd like to thank my wife for encouraging, challenging, and inspiring me every day, not just to be a better photographer, but to be a better man. I wanna thank my parents for their endless love and wisdom. And lastly, I'd like to thank you, Detroit. I appreciate you. I am Darcel Deneau, and I'm really, really excited to be a 2021 fellow. Receiving an artist fellowship validates that what I do is worthwhile, and that means the world to me. This is truly one of the greatest honors of my life. I'm a mosaic artist, and I create Detroit urban landscapes using glass and found objects. I'm really grateful to be part of the Detroit artist community. There are so many really talented and creative artists and that inspires me to do my best every single day. Thank you to my family, especially my husband, for the constant support and enthusiasm. Thank you, Joan Schwartz, for introducing me to Mosaics. And congratulations to all of the 2021 Fellowship and Gilda Award recipients. It is a great honor to be a part of this group. My name is Solomon Johnson. Um, I'm a book illustrator and an, an awardee of the 2021 Kresge uh, Arts in Detroit Fellowship. I'm very honored to be here. Um, I really would like to uh, thank Kresge Arts in Detroit for taking the time actually to seek out and support artists in Detroit. This is a very talented area, a very talented uh, city. And so to be able to recognize those, um, you know, every civilization uh, needs to have people who are able to express themselves freely so that we can see a reflection of ourselves um, and so that we can see how we can impact society for better in, in the present as well as the future. So I'm really honored. Hi, my name is Gisela McDaniel. I am a Chamorro artist based in Detroit, Michigan. As a Chamorro Pacific Islander and 
part indigenous woman, I am dedicated to treating my subjects with respect. All of my paintings are interview based and I speak to folks about what healing from sexual, intergenerational, systematic, and institutional violence looks like. Oftentimes when I sit with somebody and we share a story, there's so much wisdom in the way folks survive and navigate their lives. And to be able to share these stories is truly such a gift. I'm really excited to use this grant to interweave more voices together and to let our stories float into the world and be heard and listened to. I'd like to thank Kresge for this opportunity and the city of Detroit for really nourishing me through this project. What up though, my name is Sabrina Nelson. I am a lifelong Detroiter since 1967, and now I have the title of Kresge winner, or fellow, I guess I should say. I wanna thank my CCS family, those that taught me uh, before I arrived at this moment, uh, Gilda Snowden, Lester Johnson, Russell Keeter, uh, Dennis Galfi, Jay Holland, Matt Holland, Joseph Wesner, uh, Todd Erickson, and Michael Curtis, and so many others. Um, I wanna thank the National Conference of Artists who um, have been around for a very long time to uh, ground uh, black artists in their uh, histories and understanding their uh, futures as well. I wanna thank my family, my father, my children, my daughter, my uh, son and my other daughter, and also my mother and my siblings for encouraging me, and my very good artistic friends to kind of light the fire underneath my ass to make sure that I'm doing what I say I'm going to do. They make me accountable when I make promises. So um, thank you very much for um, letting me know that I'm doing the work and that you see it. So I appreciate this, and again, thank you to the Kresge Foundation and those who support artists who need your support. I am honored and so very grateful to have participated in the Kresge Artist Fellowship. Thank you so much for the opportunity and for this incredible gift. I wanna thank my friends and my family for encouraging me to apply, and I thank God for gracing me with the passion and the drive to pursue my dreams. Animation is a huge love of mine, and I can only hope to push the industry forward and to take it to new heights. And I also hope to inspire others through my work. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Andy T. I use he, him, his pronouns. I live in Southwest Detroit. I am just so grateful to receive this award. I've been applying to the Kresge since 2009. Thanks to the huge community of people around me. We all worked on our applications together over those years. Thanks to everyone who shared a studio space with me. Uh, my girlfriend, Amanda Thatch, who's a brilliant artist. And I'm wearing the Zoom background for my union. Um, there's so many Leos uh, who have gotten the Kresge. Just some highlights, Melanie Manos, Annika Cupatelli, Shiva Amadi, Jessica Freeland Heisen, Marion Hayden, Penny Gaboldo. And I'm out of time. I love you all. Thank you. Hi, I'm Graham White. I am honored to be chosen as a Kresge Fellow. Uh, I want to thank Kresge Arts in Detroit for this award. Uh, I'd also like to thank my family and my friends who have uh, supported and helped throughout the years. Um, I'd also like to thank the various galleries and institutions that have shown my work over the years, as, uh, as well as the entire arts community in Detroit. It's a really fantastic community, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Wow, what an incredible group of artists once again this year receiving awards. I hope you'll join me in congratulating this group of literary and visual artists and thanking them for the work that they bring to Detroit. I'd also like to congratulate the 2020 Kresge Artist Fellows and Gilda Award recipients who are closing out their fellowship year. If you aren't familiar with all of these artists, or even if you are, I hope that you will visit kresgeartsindetroit.com where you can see work samples about each of the artists, read their bios, and generally learn more. Also, we have Kresge Arts in Detroit Presents.org, where you can catch the latest films in the film series that have just been released. Those highlight the 2020 Kresge Artist Fellows, and also catch artists who have received awards through Kresge Arts in Detroit in conversation with other artists, for example, through the Subject Matters podcast series that's hosted by Imani Mixon and is a collaboration with Red Bull Arts. 
As well, know that in November of 2021, we'll kick off the next application cycle for the Kreisky Artist Fellowships and Gilda Award recipients. So please keep an eye on that and also follow us on social media where you'll learn where you can see the work of Kresge Arts in Detroit artists, whether it's eminent artists, whether it's fellows or Guild Award recipients, all of that we post where you can catch the work in person on social media so that you can see the work in real life. Thank you again to the panelists who selected the award recipients this year, as well as Carol Harris, Rip Rapson and the Kresge Foundation, Don Tusky and the College for Creative Studies, and of course also the staff of Kresge Arts in Detroit, Sharice Morris, and Pasalakwa. Pasalakwa, you can spend a bit more time with here in just a moment if you stick around as they're going to close out our program tonight. Thanks again for joining us. Congratulations to all of the artists receiving awards, and we'll see you next time. Let a part of it, I said that I really wish that I wasn't privy to Not a little one's wondering how to get a leg of better listen 
the intuition and keep the other voices to a minimum. Sometimes you gotta get a lot of words in. Sometimes I'm a little more urgent. I see them feet are running. Hey, them cat people are coming. You gotta learn to go best yourself if you don't check yourself. You gotta hear both things on the dollar. Let me see a smile. Let me hear you holler. That's real when the water hits the metal. When you want another level, boy, you wanna hear. About time that you had a good time. About time that you had a good time. That cat man dance. That cat man dance. Do that cat man dance. That cat man dance. Do your Stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out. That's what I tell myself. So now you know. That's what I tell myself.